Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So today's going to be a little bit of a different video, but it's one that I'm really excited about and hopefully something that I can expand upon. Um, but it is like my recommended authors and a general review of the author. So for this video, it will be of Kate Morton. So she is probably, um, she's an author that I knew a lot about my aunts and my mom have both read all of her books and so I it took me a while a couple summers until maybe the summer of 2017 for me to actually get really invested in her books that was the first time I picked them up and I fell in love with them so I'll kind of go through the six published works I do have reviews for most of these which I'll link down below and in the cards um, but in no in particular order we first have The Forgotten Garden the Lake House, The House at Riverton, The Secret Keeper, The Distant Hours, and The Clockmaker's Daughter. So overall, Kate Morton's books all follow kind of a very similar, not so much pattern, but in terms of the overall layout of the novel. So it usually has a dual storyline taking place where something in the past is now affecting something in the present. So usually the character in the present day is kind of trying to figure out what's going on. So we get a dual storyline in the past of what is somehow related to what's going on today. And so what I really like about these is that it's a good twist of historical fiction and mystery because there is always some mystery aspect that is somehow tied in with the past and the present. Something in the past is affecting something that's happening maybe 60, 70 years later. And I think that's what really sucks you in because you're just like, okay, you're trying to figure out what's going on and you get little timbits and as the story progresses and as the characters learn more, you are learning more and you learn more about also the past storyline. So they end up actually end up converging. And she does that so seamlessly interweaving the past and present storylines that it flows very nice and it doesn't feel like stop and go, stop and go with how some of these dual storylines work. But they're so vivid and atmospheric and she's very good on the details. And if you look at her books, there isn't like a lot of dialogue. It's more so on the atmosphere and it really creates such a vivid illustration in your mind. Like you can feel yourself being there. Like and there's one that's like takes place on the coast of England and I can feel the salt water splashing, like splashing my face. I can feel that dark muggy atmosphere and I think that's what makes her books so grasping is because you're totally sucked in and they cover a lot of different historical points like World War II, like kind of the era similar to Downton Abbey and it's just very interesting how she weaves that all in like World War One, and then she's working on a new one that has some jazz era stuff in here that I, I've seen on her Instagram which is also really exciting and then the newest one the clockmaker's daughter this one right here that was published last year is um, also has like a paranormal aspect so she kind of mixes it up a little bit and that's what I really love about these books it's just it's so engrossing and she does it so like seamlessly and effortlessly that it's just like like I can totally I see it as a movie is basically what I'm trying to say like I can see myself totally doing this like I could being in this world being in these houses like living the lives of these people and I think that's what makes her writing just so unique and so engrossing and I really wish I heard more people talk about her books here on booktube um, which is a little bit disappointing but it's just a sign of the times I guess with the YA push but um, yeah I like I said I cannot recommend her books enough like they're so good and if you love historical fictions or like kind of mysteries I think this would be a perfect integration of those two genres for you like to enjoy um, so like I said I could not recommend them enough um, I feel like the distance hours or the house at Riverton are just good introduction ones I forget which one is the one that was published first but those ones like are kind of a good introduction to her writing um so in the ways that i would recommend reading it like those are the ones to kind of start out with because those ones in my opinion are like her first ones so 
one of like the first or second one so there's still like she gets better and better with each book I find but in terms of like my top breakdown of all of the books I first have The Secret Keeper, The Forgotten Garden, The Clockmaker's Daughter, The Lake House, The House at Riverton, and then The Distant Hours. So like I said, like they're really good, but I recommend starting either at the House at Riverton or the Distant Hours. Um, but overall, like I said, I cannot recommend this author enough, but I'm really excited for her jazz era uh, novel that hopefully maybe next year, I don't know, she's still writing it in her books, as you can see, are quite dense. So uh, hopefully, I'm hoping for a new one next year. But that's it guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you are interested in picking up some of her books or if you've read them, which one is your favorite. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.